Uh-huh, I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. I got a radio show. Just trying to give God some back. Just some back of what he even gave me. Just a portion, you know, just... I'm just trying, man, to, to, to show some type of gratitude for all his blessings. I'm just trying to, man, just, just get it right sometimes. You know what I mean? I mean, man, you just can't do what you want to do and just live wrong all the time, man. You got to, at one point in time, Steve, come on, man. Come on, man. You could do better. I know you can. You know, and, and, and you know what I had to do? I had to stop saying, I'm going to try to do better. And I just had to say, hey, man, I'm going to do better. You know, uh, tr- trying is just to put forth an effort, and then if it don't work, well, okay. But if you make up in your mind that I'm going to do something, then trying isn't enough. It's getting it done is the only thing that matters. See, it's the difference between doing and trying. We're going to try to win the game, or we're going to go out here to win the game. Now, trying to win the game means that you could lose. But when you got in your mind made up, most athletes will tell you, that they go out there with the full intent and purpose of winning and winning only. See, they don't put the second place finisher on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Second place don't get you there. You you got to win. And now take it out of the scope of athletics, but keep it in that type of type of analogy. In life, man, you just want to you want to win in life, don't you? I mean, at the end of the day, don't you want to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated of life? Don't you want to be recognized for your hard work? Don't you want, you know, to be recognized within the bonus structure down at your job? Don't you want to have your plaque up on the wall down at your job? I mean, most people do. Some people could care less. Some people don't care about looking good or being their best. And that's cool, but I ain't talking to them, though. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to those of you who who, who want to be the best you can be. You know, people, people kill me when they get mad at at, at people, and yeah. hey, he brown nose, and he all up on the employee of the month. Man, the dude doing his job to the best of his ability, and he getting recognized for it. What that got to do with all that you talking about? Because you ain't up there. You know, it's amazing, man, how people describe other people's success. He's so lucky. Lucky? Hey, man, don't they kind of get you a little bit when people call you lucky? When, let me tell you what luck really is, y'all. Luck is when hard work bumps up into opportunity. Some people call that luck. But hold on. Let's let's think about this. If you wasn't working hard and opportunity presented itself, what would you call that? But see, when you've been working hard and opportunity presents itself and it bumps up into each other, now people want to call that luck. 
But hold up, here go the part, though, that they ain't paying no attention to. Yeah, that opportunity came by. But if you had not been working hard and the hard work had not ran up in the opportunity, what would you have? No, sir, it's not luck. It's work. It is work. Because there's a scripture that says faith without works is dead. But my mama was a Sunday school teacher. She taught me enough, though. Now, I know the difference between right and wrong just like you do. You ain't got to, you know, it, it kills me when people write a strawberry letter. Am I wrong for this? You know, good and well, look at, listen, read your letter. Are you wrong for this? You know, you wrong, but you don't need us to be telling, you know, but I'm going to do this anyway. Well, see, go ahead, though. Do what you want to do. But you know what, y'all? Here's the best advice I can give you. This is what I really uh, came to talk about this morning, but I got sidetracked because I listened. Get out of your own way. So many of us are blocking our own blessings. We're just in our own way. We are in our own way. And one of the most dangerous ways you can get in your way is to do it your way, to get it figured your way, and to lock in on your way, and this the way it's got to go. Do you know how many people are blocking their blessing? Do you know how long I blocked mine with that mindset right there? Look, because it's the way you do it, you think that make it the right way? You think jazz because you done thought on it long and hard, and that's what you really want. Do you really think that your way is the right way, or could there be a better way? See, until I started listening to God and started paying attention to his way, man, I was spinning my wheels, man. I was out here so determined this is how I was going to do it. But, you know, I had to learn how to get out of my own way because just because I could do it my way didn't mean it was the right way. I had to get out of my own way. Just get out your way, man. Now, wh- wh- what, what does that mean? That means, see, set your goals. That means have your dreams. That's, I'm, I'm saying set your goals, man. I ain't saying don't set goals. Listen to me. Set your goals. What is it you want to happen? What is it you'd like to have? What is it you'd like to be? What do you aspire to? Set your goals and set your dreams. Now, take your goals and your dreams to God and ask God to show you how. Man, you can save yourself a lot of pain. Listen to somebody who did it his way for so long. And when I finally got out of my way, out of my own way, when you've heard old people say, let go and let God, you've heard them say that. I didn't didn't get it. But I got it now. Let go and let God. And it's an amazing little saying, though. Now, you know, you may not get it now. It it took me a bunch of years to get it, too. But when I took my goals and my dreams and my vision to God, and I said, God, this is what I hope for. This is what I aspire to. This is what I want to be. This is where I would love to get to. Then I said, help me. Show me how. Point me in the right direction. Let me follow your footsteps. Guide me. Give me a a spirit of discernment. Show me who wrong. Because I meet people every day. Ain't up to no good with me. Every single day. Oh, man. Man, I can't believe I run up into you, man. The Lord told me something was going to happen to me today. Well, see, I talk to him every day. He did not mention you to me. He he ain't said nothing to me. He didn't tell me what was going to happen in my life. Now, that don't mean it can't happen. Because I'm open to it. So, really, man. I'm, I'm and, I, and, I, and and please know I'm listening as well as I've ever listened before. But but get yourself together though. See, know your goals and your dreams, and then let God show you how to do it. He'll do it. You know, it's so important, everybody, that you get focused, that you aim for something, that you dream of something, that you aspire to something. But it's the most, the best thing you can do after you do all that. Man, get God involved in it, man. Talk to him. I mean, why would you not? What you got to lose? You ain't got to go down there and make no big scene and and run laps around the church and run up there and throw yourself on the altar and scream and flip over and throw money in the air. You ain't got to do that. This you and God, man. This you and God. You know, you got to serve and praise him the way you do it. You got to let nobody else tell you how it's done. It's a personal relationship. People kill me if you don't do it this way, if you don't come here to this church and you don't run around in this circle and you don't get flipped in the air and you don't... Hey, man, you better go have a relationship with God. See what that's about. You understand? Don't nobody throw you off with all that. All right? All right, y'all. Talk to him. He'd love to hear from you today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Right. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I said ladies and gentlemen. That would be everybody listening. We're boys and girls. You fit yourself into that ladies and gentlemen category. You understand? I'm talking to ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Now, this Steve talking, but this show ain't going to work without who I'm about to introduce, though. Shirley Strawberry. Hey, good morning, Steve. Carla Pharrell. Good morning. What's up, crew? Yeah, Junior. Morning up. Yep. And the fool. Doggy dog. We in here, baby. <laughs> yeah, 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 boy. Okay. Oh. I don't know what to say to y'all. We didn't Um, talk about it yesterday, and I don't want to talk about it today. All right, well, I ain't going to bring up the Houston game in the last two seconds. I'm not going to bring it up. Uh, (laughs) Carla's husband, Tosh, probably towed a house up, Holly. But uh, you just black and gold everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't even go with your decor, Carla. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that the was, colors in the house. Was, right, right. Ago. We can let it go. That's too. That days. was a heck of a yeah, game. Yeah. I text Junior. I say, man, how the hell did New Orleans let this dude throw two bombs, <laughs> man, in yeah. the last thirty seconds of the game? He threw two bombs. Two bombs. Two strikes. Two strikes. Deshaun was on fire. Strikes, boom, man. boom. What? I don't know how they let two dudes get behind them when they know it ain't but 30 some seconds. It didn't make no damn sense. That damn Drew Brees. Well, it's number nine. <laughs> that yes, damn Drew other Brees, teams. man. Who that nation? That's Ooh. all I know in my Ooh. house. It better not be no I didn't even go on that. Facebook yesterday. I didn't even want to look at No, it. I turned my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> but what compared about the to other Sunday game, when you two? yeah compared to Sunday when you have football on every, every TV, TV in the house <laughs> ten games on and where I walk is the game at on. one time. Uh, Junior got but the other all night. in the bathroom he got <laughs> yeah. TV man. But it's two days later we I know <laughs> you I okay know. Junior you still yeah. hurt. Yeah. And okay, oh, he don't up a rub it in. I know. You know y'all lost. <laughs> well, no, I was just bringing it up because the Browns got stumped, so I just need somebody else <laughs> to feel this pain I'm in. <laughs> well, when you guys get ready to change the subject of football, let me know. Okay, you haven't said anything, <laughs> but I really noticed it today. His stomach is almost touching his back, Steve. <laughs> he is that skinny. He's so skinny, Steve. He look good, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm I've trying. Ne- since I've known you, nephew, I ain't been this small. Your nep- your stomach has never been that small. No. That's yeah. gonna look real crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't that ain't that small for that height. Shut up, man. <laughs> Let me have Boy, this moment, man. Height. Height. <laughs> to my height. Oh, no. Ain't no F in height. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. You trying to look good for TV. I know. Man, that's TV. Ready to love. I it's saw. A promo, Don't man. worry about that, Tommy. Mo P. They ain't finna tune in because you skinny. <laughs> 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 Hurry up, turn it on, Tommy Skinny. Yeah. <laughs> Take it from a TV man, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right, listen, guys, coming up at 32 after the hour, let's start the show off with some fun on this Wednesday inside of something funny. Guess who's back in the building? Sister Odell. Uh oh. Right after this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Sister Odell is here. Uh, <laughs> her throat is cleared out. Oh. Because mm-hmm. if not, we need to take her to the doctor. Turn the organ up, please. <laughs> oh, making demands already? Girl, you know this now I'm saying me now. She back. Hey! <laughs> Ooh. God is good. <laughs> Lord, 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 God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. Gracious. Well, well, well. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sister Odell. Good morning, Sister Odell. Hey, Carly. 
Hey, Sister Odell, how you doing? Good, sweetie, good, sweetie. How little Tasha doing? She's a big girl now. She's doing good, though. Thank you for asking. That's yes, good. Hey, Junior. Morning, Sister Odell. You looking good this morning? Mm, Lord Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. I've been praying for your voice. I guess the answer is no. <laughs> Sometimes that yes, is the answer. Sometimes. Oh, uh, hi, boy, mm -hmm. Tommy. Sister Odell, how you doing? Yes, ma'am. Good, good. Hello, Shirley. Well, hello, Sister Odell. How are you? Well, beautiful, beautiful. It's a wonderful day. I'm just in here, just blessed and highly favored. What y'all doing today? Well, Thank you, you for having me, by the way. Oh, you're quite welcome, Sister Odell. You know, I was thinking of something yesterday around the same time. Mm -hmm. We went around the room and talked about things that we regretted mm -hmm. uh, in our life. You know, there's two schools of thought on that. Some people say they don't regret anything because it made them... Everything they've done in their lives has mm -hmm. made them the person they are. And then some people did have legitimate l regrets, like all mm -hmm. of us. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you... Uh, you know, you, you've, you've lived a, a good long life, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you if you have any regrets, if there are any regrets. Well, I would say that probably my biggest was regrets was breaking up with Frederick. Frederick. Fre Frederick. Fre was that? You know Frederick what? Douglass. I cannot. Uh-uh. This is why. Was, this you is know. Why. You dated you, you the dated. abolitionist? And that's why we broke up to all that running around with freedom and everything. We didn't have no time to go out. You know, I'd leave him on the side of the chicken coop, and next thing I know, he was off trying to free somebody. I was just going, well, we free. Uh -huh. uh, and it just kept on. You know, he just, well, he belonged to the world. You know, I loved his hair, though. Love. You like that afro, huh? Girl, I, well, see, I made it an afro. He used to wear his hair in a comb. Oh, and a comp back then. Yeah, he used to have his hair like Nat King Cold, and I got hold to him, and it blowed out one night. <laughs> oh, that was your fault. Okay, mm -hmm. I oh. put it on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Tore the perm right out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. <laughs> yes, I will. Yes, he will. <laughs> this, is, this is why. Yeah. See, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So after that, you guys what remained friends? Or... Well, you know, he kind of went his own ways. He met a nice woman, and you know, oh, hmm. I went on and got married. Oh, okay. To, to who? Yeah. Well, which one you want to know about? I, you know, one of my favorite husbands was Satchel Paige. The, the baseball, baseball pitcher for the Negro League. Girl, Negro he could throw. Girl, he could throw. <laughs> <laughs> Sling it! <laughs> Good Lord Almighty. Okay. I got a question for you, sister. Okay. Uh-huh. What is it, sweetie? Did you hear about this woman in India? She was oh, 74 yeah. years old, and she gave birth to a set of twins. Mm. Did you hear about her? You know, I did her hear that. Uh-huh. What you think about that, Sister Odell? What'd you think? Oh, did it sound crazy when you heard it? <laughs> <laughs> but she had been trying all her life, Sister Odell. Her well, you know, life. it's time to let some things go. Aww. When did you have your last Aww. child? How you know, we you? talking about this woman. Why would you change the joke for the joke you told? You's an impatient-ass comedian. <laughs> That's probably how you're running through your little shows out of town. What do you mean running through? Just character after character after character. Get a joke time to develop. I taught you character. Keep going. Uh-oh. That's about all you taught me was a character. Now, Sister Odell, now. Go ahead, sweetie. You're back now. So, we were talking yeah, about that. Really yeah, back. The, yeah. the lady. Yeah, let's yeah. yeah it, that let's lady, nice. you know, I didn't be see nice. it. You know, I don't understand what she want two kids for. She's 74. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and her husband was 80. Okay, well, this baby, when he in kindergarten, what is he supposed to do? <laughs> Excuse me, what was that? Go to school. What was that, uh, Sister Odell? Well, if, when the baby go to kindergarten, how is he going to explain uh, the two people are leaning up against the wall? <laughs> <laughs> Looking like that little skeleton that be in the health class. <laughs> 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 Mm -hmm. You know that wasn't right sitting up in here. I know you might have wanted to have some kids. And, sweetie, that mean, you know, that's a... But this lady, you're just unfair to the child. Mm. Oh. 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 
That's what you think. You know, don't nobody want to be born with grandparents. <laughs> wow. Ah, standing right there. <laughs> Where's your mommy and daddy, little girl? Daddy, is you just a damn lie? No, they ain't. <laughs> <laughs> now, them is grandparents. Right? Where's your mommy and daddy? I'm telling you, that's them. You're going to get your ass put out this school. If you keep lying, telling me that them old ass people is your mommy and daddy. <laughs> That's what the kids is going to have to face. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, one last How thing. is your mom and daddy the same oh. age as Christopher Columbus? Oh. <laughs> Sister Odell, we love you. Uh, thank you, Sister Odell. Mm, Coming up you, next, Shirley. you're welcome. The nephews run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, trending viral video news. Everyone is falling in love with the video of the two little toddler boys in New York City hugging each other when they when they greeted, they ran to each other. What a moment that was. I, saw uh, I ain't seen uh, it. Saw yeah, a little white boy, a little black boy just I ran. I ain't seen it. So yeah, yeah, you got to see it. <laughs> you got to see it. Get, get a little phone. black boy and a little white boy. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Oh, well, we know the white boy ain't Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> no racism, no hate, nothing like that. Oh, that's well, yeah, me yeah. Him, All love. And in other good news, Michael Jordan, haven't heard from him in a while, Michael Jordan donates one million dollars to Hurricane Dorian relief in the Bahamas. We'll talk about it at the top of the hour. But right now, the nephew standing by with today's Run That Prank. What you got? Can I ask Matt? you a question? Run that uh, prank back. Why is we always got to run a prank back? You can't think of nothing else? Well, people want to hear the prank ran back. Now. Just a lazy, you just a lazy little something. You I'm know, not, Kate I'm, told me you was a lazy uh, You're not going to bring my mom in this oh. right here? I brought my friend into it. Okay. She brought you into it later on. She brought me into the world. Okay. Whoa, world. did you hear that W? I it's did you world. Hear? I did. It, no, no, he I went. heard it, and it's not wor- world. It's world. <laughs> I said it right that time. Just Come as dumb. Come on, nephew. Facebook <laughs> bandit. Let's go, cat dog. Facebook bandit. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Maurice. Yeah, this is Maurice. How you doing, man? My name is Dorsey. I'm trying to reach out to you. Uh, you you're on Facebook quite a bit. Am I am I right? I mean, I'm on the computer a lot, man. That's what I do. Okay. Um, my wife, for some reason, man, um, it seems that you've been having a lot of back and forth on Facebook with my wife, Denise. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, um, you know, at first it was kind of cute or whatever. You know, I'm seeing your name on the wall all the time. You keep I N in my wife back and forth, and I'm you like, mean, you mean I M in instant message? That's what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. So my thing is, what what is all this here with um with you and Denise? You know, okay, you make these little, oh, you make yo, these yo, little yo, yo, yo. Yo, what you say your name was? My name Dorsey. Okay, Dorsey. Check this out, man. I got over 1,400 plus friends on Facebook. I don't know who your wife is. Okay. I, I, okay. I don't recall. I am in though, Denise, right now. Hey, I don't know who she is, man. I think okay. you got well, the let wrong. Me ask you this. Let, me, let, me, let me bring it to you so we can refresh your memory. Because you're constantly asking her about how things used to be. Uh, remember when we did this? Remember when we did that? You know, it's a whole lot of remember this and that. And you asking her, you know, about hooking up. Whenever she got time. Okay, see, I don't even do that, man. I don't even do that. I don't do that, man. I got too much to lose. I don't do nothing like that, man. You know, okay. I could, I could, I could have over thirty out of fourteen hundred friends, man. I could have over thirty Denises on there, man. Well, I tell you what, man. Are you telling all the Denises that you want to hook up with them? Are you telling all the Denises remember this, remember that? I ain't telling nobody nothing, man. Look, I try to live my life as peaceful as possible, man. I, I'm not on that, okay? So I. I you know, Darius, whatever your name is, man. I- my name is Dorsey. And let me explain something to you, man. I didn't see pictures, brother, of uh, high school pictures of, of you and a group on the uh, on the site. So I know exactly what you look like, okay? You say me and who? I didn't see a group of you all that went to high school together. And evidently, you know, you one of these guys. So I'm, I'm going to figure out exactly which one you are. So what, I was tagged on a photo or something like that? Whatever, however you want to call it. I don't know much about the damn shit. All I'm letting you know is that I got a problem with you, Maurice, hitting my wife for trying to see about can she get out with you, can she do this, can she do okay, that. look, 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 Darius, Darius, you need hey, to go man, check it's your... Hey, man, Dorsey, man. It's Dorsey. I don't give a what your name is, man. First of all, I'm on the toilet, 
and you calling me early in the morning when I already got... Look, I'm peaceful, man. I, I don't even cuss no more, man. You done got me out of my out of my zone, man. Look, I don't know who your wife is. I don't be on Facebook like that. It stay up in the corner while I'm on a computer doing other shit. My wife so it looks like I'm Denise. on here. You understand me? My wife is Denise. You talking to Dorsey. You understand me? Now let me tell you something. If I see your on the wall, if I see you I in and my wife, it's going to be some Maurice. How the is that? You don't even know where I live, dude. Oh, Look, don't worry I don't know about who that. you. I will find that. If I found your number, don't think I won't find it. You find my You right. You right. You right. You do got my number. How the hell did you get my number? Don't worry about that. You're going to be saying that when I get on your front doorstep. How the hell you find my address? Yeah, you come to my door and see what's going to happen, man. And when I leave, you're going to be saying, why the hell did you whoop my That's what you're going to be saying. I got you. I got you. Come on. Hello? Now, I'm going to say this one more time, and I'm going to say it clear. Maurice, if I see your name on my computer dealing with my wife, Denise, again, I'm coming to your house, and I'm whooping your ass. Okay, look, look, Darius. I'm going to own this. You listen. Man, it's Dorsey, man. Dorsey, I'm, I'm, I apologize. Dorsey, look, man, I feel for you. You know, I, I you know, it, it seems like your wife is, on the computer a lot, hey, she, she, I am in people, whatever, but I'm the wrong cat to talk to, man. You need to talk to your wife, man. You know, y'all need to settle that, man. Maybe y'all need to go to church, man, talk to the pastor or something, but I'm the wrong cat, man. All right, I'm going to tell you something, man. You keep talking about you feel for me, you understand. Let me tell you something. I feel for you. If I see your on my wife's computer one more time, if I see a baby picture, a high school picture, a high school sweetheart picture, I don't give a if you played football or ran track, if I see any picture, anything dealing with your name, Maurice, on my white computer, I'm kicking your Wow. 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 You know what, man? <laughs> I don't give a who you is, Darius, whoever the I can't even remember what the your name is, man. Do not call my house no more. I don't know who your wife is. And you know what? My address is trail, man. You come on down here, Decatur, Georgia. You come. Man, uh, I'm saying to you, get your I'll You already gave you a chance to talk. I told you where I live at. Now you bring your to my door and you see what happens. I got one more thing I want to say to you. Man, you ain't got to say stuff to me, man. Yes, I do, Maurice. Before I get in my car and head over there, I got one more thing I want to say. Is you listening? I'm hanging up. Are you listening to me? What the f*** you got to say? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Chris. <laughs> Wait, you say who? Who? <laughs> this is nephew Tommy, man, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your boy Chris got me to prank phone call you, dog. Boy, <laughs> wait till I call Chris, man. Oh, I don't believe it, man. For real, man. Man, you gonna make me close my Facebook account, man. <laughs> wow. Let me ask you, man. What is what is the baddest radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, in trending viral video news, uh, it was posted on Steve Harvey FM. If you get a chance, check it out on Instagram as well. It's time for Tell Me Something Good, okay? Uh, Steve, (laughs) absence does indeed make the heart grow fonder. Two-year-olds Maxwell and Finnegan, two best friends from New York City, were caught on camera racing toward each other and giving each other the biggest hugs, uh, running with arms spread wide open after they hadn't seen each other in a few days. I mean, these boys take music class together, and one boy is black, one boy is white. Uh, Maxwell's father wrote on Facebook, Finnegan and Maxwell besties, if we could all be like this. No more. Yeah. I've seen it too. That's yeah. yeah. such a happy uh-huh. story. They were yeah. so, it was. Cute. so cute. So cute. So cute. It was. I mean, that was it really was good. genuine. It touched your heart. Yeah. Yes. You know? yes. Yeah. It's you want to see more stories like that yeah. for sure. The truth yeah. of the story is that was me and Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> they were so cute though. What adorable yeah. little boy. Y'all, y'all, hey man, why don't y'all do a reenactment of the video? <laughs> <laughs> 
They should. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all about to save side. I knew it. I knew, I knew that was coming. <laughs> but you know, the the thing is, though, what happens between when you see that kind of love and. You know, like we said, no racism, no nothing. And then when people grow up and they're on opposite sides, you know, right. uh, yeah. of the, the thing. Hate yeah, taught. The hate is taught. Yeah, yeah, it's taught. taught. Exactly. It's taught. Exactly. Yeah, it's taught. Yeah. Black behavior. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, here's more good news. Uh, according to Sports Illustrated, Michael Jordan donated $1 million to Hurricane Dorian relief efforts in the Bahamas. Uh, Michael Jordan said in a statement, I am devastated to see the destruction that Hurricane Dorian has brought to the Bahamas, where I own property and visit frequently. My heart goes out to everyone who is suffering and to those who have lost loved ones. Mm, he went on to say, move. yeah, the Bahamian mm-hmm. people are strong and resilient, and I hope my donation will help. Yes, it yeah. will. Yes, it right. will. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Sure it Enjoy will. it, Mike. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Steve, today is September 11th, 9-11th, a day we will never forget. I'm Diane Sawyer, and it's Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. It is beautiful outside, perfect September day. Just a few moments ago, something uh, believed to be a plane crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. I'm afraid we've got a tragedy on our hands. That looks like a second plane. Oh, Oh my God. It literally flew itself into World Trade Center. People are jumping out the windows, I guess, because they're trying to see themselves. We now have fire confirmed at the Pentagon. Police officers ran up to us and told us there is a plane that has been hijacked and is headed this way. United Airlines 93 crashed in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. We are a nation under siege. The building has collapsed. It pulled it down on itself. Oh, my God. My God. Goodness. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Uh, please now, let's get caught up on today's headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you very much, Ann. This is Ann Tripp with the news. Hurricane Dorian's death toll in the Bahamas is now up to at least 50, with more than 2,000 people displaced and living in shelters, and an estimated 10,000 or so from the Abaco Islands said to be in need of the basic necessities like food and water. A lot of folks in uh, Florida also mobilizing to help uh, people in the Bahamas, as well as people all over the country and the world. President Trump is looking for a new national security advisor. Again, Trump tweeted yesterday that he informed John Bolton that his services were no longer needed. And Trump says his decision was not about a single issue, but rather about a whole host of disagreements. Bolton says that he was not fired, that he quit. Bolton says that he offered the president his resignation on Monday, but that Trump said, let's talk about it, and then turned around and announced his firing. Whatever. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, about one in every eight of people in this country lived in poverty last year. That's a slight decline from the year before and the lowest level since before the recession. The one not so good number is the one concerning health care. Uh, there are more Americans without health care, about 27.5 million people. Some good news on the job scene. Uh, we're coming up on the holiday season, and the Target folks, they say they're hiring more than 130,000 people ahead of the Christmas holiday season. And the Associated Press reports that Target's doubling the number of new hires specifically for online orders. Yes, today is September 11th, and we remember. This is Ann Tripp, remembering 9 11. I've never seen any. It looks like a movie. I saw a longer plane, like a jet immediately headed directly into the World Trade Center. It, it just flew into it, into the into the other tower coming from south to north. I watched the plane fly into the World Trade Center. It was a jet. It was a very large plane. It was going south. It went past the Ritz-Carlton that's how this being built and Battery Park. It went flew right past it, almost hit it, and then went in. United 93 calling. United 93, understand, have a bomb on board. Go ahead. Executive 956, did you understand that transmission? The affirmative. He said there was a bomb on board. United 93, Cleveland, do you still hear the center? United 93, do you still hear Cleveland? I remember we saw it, there was a building on fire, and it was, uh, it was the biggest fire that I'd ever seen in my entire life. Uh, the whole building was uh, completely engulfed in flames, and um, at the scene, a police officer had uh, said to somebody that uh, between three and 400 firefighters uh, were, were possibly dead. And I remember when I heard it, I, I just completely dismissed it. I thought there was, I even thought it was irresponsible of him to be saying that to be saying something as, as, as crazy as that, as ridiculous as that. And um, 
uh, but subsequently found out that he was uh, he was exactly accurate. Uh, 343 firefighters died. Everybody understood the momentous nature of the event, and everybody understood the tragedy that was before us. A lot of things we're going to have to do. Rescue efforts in New York, rescue efforts at the Pentagon, rebuilding, building international coalitions, making sure we knew who had done this to us and how do we go after them. They weren't just out to terrorize us. They were out to bring us down. They went after our power centers. America hasn't changed. They tried. And they killed some of our fellow citizens and we'll be mourning them. And they knocked down some of our structures and we'll rebuild them. But you didn't win anything. We're still here. We're going to be here long after you've gone to hell. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Antonio Brown back in the news. Now he's being sued by a woman who claims he sexually assaulted and raped her. What? Yeah, yeah, this what? is crazy, right? Huh? Antonio Brown? Antonio Brown saying that he sexually assaulted and raped her during three separate encounters. Wow. This is all according to a a new lawsuit that was uh, obtained by TMZ Sports. The woman behind the lawsuit identifies herself as Brittany Taylor. She says she was hired by Antonio as a personal trainer. Uh, And then she says that the first incident happened back in June of 2017. So this we're talking two over two years ago uh, during a training session when Brown exposed himself and kissed her without her consent. Then she describes a second alleged incident later that month. Brown, while positioned behind her, began masturbating near her without her knowledge and ejaculated on her back. That was the second incident. Uh, This is getting crazy and crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then several months later, the accuser claims that Brown reached out to her to express, um, you know, that he was sorry and begged her forgiveness. Uh, Taylor claims that Brown begged her to continue training him after Initially uh, hesitating, she ultimately agreed. But then nearly a year later, on May 20th, 2018, she says he countered her, forced her down onto a bed, pushed her face into the mattress, and forcibly raped her. Oh, man. Wow. She said she tried to fight back, but he was too strong and he overpowered her. This happened three different times? Yeah, three different occasions. June 2017, that was the first incident. The next one was later that month. Then the third one was um, May 20th, 2018, when he cornered her, she says, and forcibly raped her. She tried to fight back, she said, but he overpowered her. Right now, the victim, the the investigation and and and, and the victim of it has to go through it. I think the football team and the NFL has to react to the accusation immediately because of the climate today. Yeah, there was a lawsuit filed in federal court in Florida. Uh, Supposedly there are some profane and very angry text messages from Brown as well. Yeah, this is not good. Nope, nope, nope. All right, meanwhile, Brown's attorney, his name is Darren Heitner, uh, he has issued a statement adamantly denying these allegations and claiming that uh, Brittany Taylor only filed the suit to punish Antonio Brown for refusing to invest $1.6 million in a business project back in 2017. Mm. All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So Steve, J. Anthony Brown, uh, we know, of course, has the day off, and he is listening, as always. He loves it when we ask you questions, okay? So he sent a list of questions that he wanted me to ask you. All right? Okay. You ready? I'm right here. This ain't rapid fire, nothing, is it? It's just questions. Uh, Okay. We have several of them, so you might want to, you know, uh, do them expeditiously. Answers. Okay. Do you get mad when you can't find something? Yeah, Yeah, hell yeah. (laughs) You get mad on everything. Yeah, you know, I get mad when I can't find nothing. Where the hell is it? I walked. I was talking to somebody. I was looking all out to the car. Man, I said, "Hold on, man. I got to be back, man. I hold up, yeah." I said, "Man, what's wrong? I can't find my phone, man." I was on it. Yes, yes. We've yeah, you right. I get mad when I can't find nothing. <laughs> All right, so uh, here's an interesting question. This, these are questions that J. Anthony Brown wanted us to ask you. 
If your better half, Steve, if Marjorie had on something you didn't like, would you say anything? Would you say nope. something? Nope. <laughs> no, that's right. I know that wow. girl right no. there. Nope. That's cute. <laughs> I wish you would. Ooh, go on, cute. girl. Well, just then, I'm not going. How about that? <laughs> All right, here's another one. Name three TV shows you and your wa- wife watch together. Oh. What <sighs> TV shows do you and Marjorie watch together? Oh. Is it that hard? <laughs> Sports Center. No, football. She'll sit down and watch football with me. Don't know a damn thing. Just be asking questions or hold. I can't stand it. Uh, go in the other room. <laughs> Why are they jumping up and down? It's a touchdown. How many points for a touchdown? <sighs> Why are they kicking it? <laughs> football. Uh, what else do we watch? Sometimes we'll watch the news. Okay, yeah. And. I can um, see that. I guess the only other thing we'll watch together is, uh, oh, yeah, movies. Movies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Watch oh. movies together. I got, I got, Nestor and I have two out of three of those. No, I'm not watching a football. All right, here we go. Uh, this other question, <laughs> Jay Anthony Brown wanted me to ask you. Uh, do you talk to yourself? You talk to yourself, if so, about what? I talk to myself about damn near anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Like, for instance. <laughs> Mostly about other people, though. <laughs> you know, like somebody getting on my nerves, uh-huh. oh, I fire them off. To yourself, To yourself. Now, that's in practice for when I see them. <laughs> <laughs> getting ready, huh? I like it because a lot of, if we're caught off guard, sometimes we don't know what to say if we're uh, caught no, off no, guard. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, no. When I see you, I didn't thought it out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, it's, it's, it's damn near scripted. <laughs> I like it, yeah. Steve. All right, here's another one from J. Anthony Brown. Name one good thing and one bad thing about your on-air radio personality. Name one good thing and one bad thing about your about us. Uh, the good thing is they're probably the most dependable crew in all of radio. Oh, wow. I mean, they constantly are very supportive. They have answers and responses. Okay. Bad thing. Sometimes they talking on top of me. <laughs> on top of, on, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. All right, here's the last. Here's, the? Okay, go, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Answer the last question. Go on, sir. All right, here, here's the last one, Steve. This is from <laughs> J. Anthony Brown. Name some of your best friends. <sighs> we ain't Biggie in that. Wig. We ain't in that. Uh-huh. Marvelous Marvin Horton. Ricardo Prue, Butch Meredith. Al Brown, I'm talking about ride or die. I'm talking about, will go down with me. Uh-huh. Manny Calhoun, uh, uh, Blue uh, Colquitt, Ricky old. Lewis. Who last people? Okay, we don't know these people, but I'm no, glad No, all of them. They ain't none of them famous. <laughs> but but, but Maybe. can I say this? We'll yeah. say it, you Carla. didn't say J. Anthony Brown. Yeah. <laughs> and that is going to be a problem. Okay. Well, you know, I don't want to, you know, put too much on him because I know he's sick. <laughs> well, oh! you know what? That don't stop him from being a good friend. Yeah, he's still your friend, Stephen. He is at chemo well, I don't today. Want him to ask me for nothing right now. He's at chemo right now. He's kicking cancer's butt. <laughs> we love you, J. Anthony Brown. Coming yeah. up next, nephew in the building with a prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, I'm stressed out in my classroom. But right now, the nephew is in the building with today's prank phone call. What you got for us today, Nev? PSC. Whoa, what is that? Prostate checker. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Junior? No, you ain't dog. You want, you want an appointment tomorrow? No, you ain't checking me. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, cat dog. Prostate check. Here we go. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a, uh, a Roger. This is Roger. Hi, my name is Greg. I'm a PSC. Uh, I got you on my schedule. I'm supposed to come by your house tomorrow morning at about 7.15. I just want to give you a call and uh, give you a heads up and let you know we will be there about 7.15. From my understanding, you go to work you at... Say uh, you're a, oh, you say you're a who? I'm a PSC, sir. I'll be okay. there. I'll be there tomorrow. I got you on my schedule uh, for Monday morning, and I'll be there uh, at least about seven fifteen. From my understanding, you go to work at seven thirty, and uh, my procedure is only going to take a couple minutes. But I wanted to What's just, just kind of give a friendly call and let you know that I will be by there tomorrow morning. 
What's a PSC? PFC? What you say? A PSC? PSC, sir. PSC. I will be there tomorrow. I've been in business uh, probably for the last, uh, I guess, about 13, 14 years now. What is PSC specialist? What you do? Oh, you're not. I'm sorry. You're not familiar. Now, how you got me on the schedule? I ain't signed up for nothing. Oh, I got you on my list here. I don't know who put you on here, but you, it's been paid for and everything for me to come by and, and do my job. And like I said, only take me a couple minutes, and I'll have you on your way. How you uh, get my number? Say, say again. How did you get my phone number? Sir, everything I have, I got. I got 20 stops tomorrow, and I got you scheduled as uh, as my uh, as my first stop tomorrow morning. I don't know. I got your phone number. I do have your address. Are you at Drive? Yeah, that's my address, but I, I'm not scheduled for nobody to come to my house in the morning. I got to go to work in the morning. I know I'm not going to be here. Right, right. My understanding, well, you, from my understanding, you pull out about 7.30, and I'm going to get there at 7.15. Like I said, my, the, the, you know, the procedure only takes about two, three minutes, and, and well, I'll be on my way. Well, who told you about all my information? You know, when I leave home and everything, who is this? Like I say, my name is Greg. I'm a, I'm a PSC, and I'll be there. Okay, you said that already. I, you, you'll see me tomorrow. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to give you a friendly call here on Sunday and let you know that I'll be there, uh, I'll be there about 7.15, and we'll get you taken care of, and then I'll let you get on your way to work. You still ain't telling me what I'm supposed, what you supposed to be doing, sir. A PSC is PSC. I'm a prostate checker, and what I'll be doing is coming in and checking your prostate tomorrow. Oh hell no! Nah. You ain't coming in to check my prostate. I get my prostate checked by my doctor. Who who was you talking about coming to check my prostate? Not at my house. You ain't coming to check my sir, prostate. You, I, and, and you know what? I get this all the time. I get a lot of people that that are in denial. A lot of men that 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 claim that they man, they my got prostate it. is fine. I had my prostate checked just the beginning of this year, man. You don't need to come to my house checking my prostate. Sir, a lot of people, a lot of men are in denial saying that they got it checked, and they got it, and a lot of times we find out they haven't. And, and, and there has to be a reason. If I got you on my list and it's paid, somebody has paid $125 for me to come by there and check it. Well, you should be happy you paid $125. It's the less job you have to do then because you're not coming to check my prostate. Sir, I'm going to check it. Now, I'm going to be by there tomorrow, and I'm, at 715, I'm putting my rubber glove on with a little bit of gel on it, and I am going to check your prostate, and then I'll let you get on to work. Well, I tell you what, that rubber glove ain't going nowhere near me, homeboy. I tell you what, you bring your ass on over to my eyes if you want to. It ain't going to be pretty, and it ain't going to be nice with you and your rubber glove. Sir, Somebody sir. might have stick a rubber glove up your ass when I'm done with you. Don't be coming about my eyes talking about checking my prostate. Sir, sir, do you realize that this is the leading cause to black men? Do you realize man, that? I understand that, man. All right, but they you got ain't four, my house three, and check my prostate. Three out of five prostate, black man. men, three out of five black men are lost every year man, because of prostate this, cancer. Man. So you ought to be very grateful that someone is sending me by there to check it and make sure you're okay. I'm grateful that I can pay for a doctor that I go to every, every uh, once a year, man. You don't have to come to my house talking about sticking no rubber glove up me, man. What's wrong with you? Sir, sir, I'm not going to sit here and go back and forth with you. My job is to give you a friendly call and let you know that I'm coming. All right? Well, I, now, tomorrow yeah. morning, listen, I don't want to hear any more of it. Tomorrow morning, I'm there at 715, and you're going to get your prostate checked whether you like it or not. Well, you bring your on by here, then. I so be here. You bring your bad Thank you bad enough to come over here and check my prostate. You bring your on. I'm going to come check on. it. So you just be ready at 715 that you're going to get your prostate checked. Yeah, I'll be here. I so I'll be let you here. go you on to work. On. Case closed. You come on over here if you want to. You know my address and all my what time I go to work and everything. You you bring your bad on over here if you want to. I don't care if I got to come over there, sir, and hold you down and check your prostate. I'm coming to check your prostate at 7.15 tomorrow morning. Oh, I tell you what, you bring your bad on over here, you, you think you know who I am, what I need over here? You come on over here and you do what you got to do. I I'm going to be over there tomorrow morning. you put morning. that rubber glove on, you're going to be checking something else besides me. You're going to be checking your own You bring your bad on over here if you want to and see if I don't get you up out of here. I'm going to be coming to my house with that baby. Baby, you found you somebody talking about I need a prostate check or something? Somebody on the phone talking about I need a prostate or something. You bring your, I'll tell you what, I'll be here when you get here. You bring your over here. You I will you be there tomorrow at 715 in the morning you your with my over glove you on. on. You better walk your over here. You better be wheeled away from this. You bring your over here if you want to. I, I'm going to have my glove on tomorrow, and I'm going to be checking your prostate well, at 7.15 in the morning. I don't know if you want to come out checking the prostate. You're going to be checking your own prostate, because I'm telling you what, I got something for your you come over here. You bring your bad you think you're bad enough to come over here and check something over here, you come on with it. I got one come more on thing I need to say to you. Are you listening? 
Then what the hell you got to say to me now? You didn't tell me it's no. Then what the you got to tell me now? Are you listening to me? Just by your on over here. You gonna be here? I'm gonna be over there, but I got one more thing I wanna say. Are you man, listening? What you got to say to me, man? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your homeboy. Who? <laughs> Who are you? Who you say you was again? <laughs> This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. Your homeboy got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Chris Johnson with Steve Harvey, man. <laughs> hey, Tommy, boy. Man. <laughs> you all right, Roger? Boy, y'all about to make me go out. I wonder who the hell gonna come out uh, of somebody how to do a prostate check, man, on a regular basis like that, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so got me, man. I'm gonna get him back, boy. I, I can't believe he do me like that. I'm gonna go over there and check his prostate. You know, I don't even think he get his checked on a regular. I want to have somebody come check mine. <laughs> hey, man, I got one more thing to ask you, man. What is? What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. <laughs> Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> oh, Steve, you need checking? Oh, I take care of my business. Okay. All right. All right. Just checking. Yeah. Just checking. Okay. Let me talk about something else. Greensboro, <laughs> North Carolina. That's what I thought. The Carolina Theater. The nephew is coming to town. That is September 21st, Saturday night. The nephew is coming to town. That is Greensboro, North Carolina. I will be there. Laying in the cut is Salisbury, Maryland. That's October the 5th. Salisbury, Maryland. I will be there as well. All right. I just want to put it out there that the nephew is coming to town. I'm moving around. October is my big month. I move around. You understand? I move around, but laying in the cut right now is Greensboro, North Carolina, Carolina Theater. Tickets are on sale right now. And October the 5th, Ready to Love premieres on the OWN Network. You do not want to miss your boy. It's, you know what? I'm smart skinny on there. Skinny Tommy, Skinny Tommy. I'm smart. Tommy. Skinny Tommy's smart on there. I'm uh -huh. stupid on him, <laughs> but I know how to change them gills, boy. I'm smart when I hit the TV, boy. Really? I'm smart. All right now. Have you ever seen a stupid person change gear? I'm not yet. <laughs> What's that saying? A leopard doesn't change his spots. This one and does. Stupid people don't have gear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, nephew. Coming up next, strawberry letter subject. I'm stressed out in my classroom. We'll find out why right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, if you need advice on sex, on dating, on work, on parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. That's right. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is from the smart man. Uh, strawberry Letter. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, All right. <laughs> Subject. I'm stressed out in my classroom. Uh, dear Stephen Shirley, I am a 32-year-old man, and I just started uh, a job teaching adults that are getting a GED. I'm loving it so far, but I need advice on how to handle a very aggressive female student in her early 60s. At the end of one of my lectures, uh, she approached me and asked what gym I go to because I have a very nice body. I blushed and didn't know what to say. She winked at me and left. Another day, she showed up to class in a very revealing outfit and said she was going out afterwards with her girls and invited me to join them because she was looking for a young guy who could keep up with her on the dance floor. I told her I don't have a lot of time for that, but the truth is she scares the heck, heck out of me. Uh, <laughs> the next day, she came to class with a bag of cherries. She said they were from a tree in her backyard, and for fun, she likes, the tie, she likes to tie the cherry stems in knots with her tongue, and she asked me if I would like to watch her do it. Mm. She said it was a gift for me being such a good teacher, and then she told me to pick the darkest cherries because they have the sweetest juice. Then she winked at me again and left. I'm an Asian guy, and she's a dark brown woman, so I hope she won't think it's a race thing when I firmly reject her. 
and tell her that she's being inappropriate. I can't risk any rumors of impropriety at work, and she's old enough to be my mother, so she does not turn me on at all. How can I stop her from acting out and making these comments without upsetting her? I get very stressed out knowing she's coming to class. You should see her. Please help me. Mm. Well, I got to say, first of all, uh, it's a great service you're providing. Uh, so thank you for that, Teaching Adults uh, GED. That, that's great. Thank you. As for your very ag- aggressive and way over the top uh, cougar student, yeah, she's out of order. She's out of line. And you know what? If it were the other way around where an older man was harassing his young student, this letter would take a whole nother turn. So you're going to have to do what you have to do here. Um, You know, yeah, you don't want to get in trouble for uh, for impropriety. Like you say, Uh, she doesn't turn you on. She's being very inappropriate uh, uh, as a student. Uh, Either you're going to have to be firm with her in no uncertain terms. You will not tolerate that in your classroom. If she continues, you're going to have to ask her to leave. You can ignore her. Every time she does anything, simply ignore her. But it, 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 because she's so aggressive, I think you need to firmly sit her down and tell her she's out of order. The revealing outfits, the cherries, the innuendos with the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice and all of that. Uh, there, there's no place for it in your classroom. And if she doesn't ha- if she doesn't stop, you're going to have to ask her to leave. Simple as that. And that's what I think you should do. All right, Steve. Well, y'all pray for me. Here I go. No, you finna mess this up. Come on. I can't wait. 32 year old man started the job teaching adults that's getting a GED. I love it, but I've got a problem. I got this aggressive female student in her early 60s. And at the end of one of the classes, she came to me and asked me what gym he go to. You know. You know, cause you she, you got a nice body. You blushed. You ain't know what to say. She winked at you and then she left. Then she saw her one day with a revealing outfit on. Said she was gonna go out afterwards with her girls and invited me to join them cause she's looking for a young guy who can keep up with her on the dance floor. Let's stop. Let's break this down for a minute. She, she in her sixties. How hard is it going to be to keep up with her <laughs> on this damn dance floor? How hard is her ass dancing? I'm 60, and I can tell you right now, I'm 62. I just like that little back and forward move. Uh-huh. To the side, to side the side. To That's side. all I got for you. Ain't all you. She ain't out there break dancing, Twerking. spinning on her head, <laughs> running man, all that cabbage <laughs> patch. Hey, man. No, she just standing there with her old ass going from side to side. So you should have went. Mm. Now, then she, I told her you don't have a lot of time for that. But the truth is, she scared the hell out of you. Now, here she make a move. Now, she come to class, got this bag of cherries. <laughs> she said they from a tree in her backyard. Now, let me tell you something about old people. Old people like picking stuff and getting it away. <laughs> I'm surprised that? she didn't can nothing for you. <laughs> My grandma so that. <laughs> it starts with just picking something. Mm-hmm. Then she going to can something for you. Then she going to go down the basement and come out with she going to have some preserves for you. Wow. Then she going to fry you some skillet corn and bring it to work. Mm. That's how it starts. Old people always want to give you something to eat. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, she got this bag of cherries. And she said for fun, she liked to tie the cherry stems in knots with her tongue and ask me if you wanted to watch her. She's too old for this. You know, you watch a girl (laughs) when she 20, 30 tying a stem with her tongue. It's exciting. When you 60 something and you can tie a stem with your tongue, people be going, What is your old ass doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need to get that stem gesture. out your mouth before you mess around and choke yourself. <laughs> when I come back, I'm going to give you the rest of it because I know what's wrong. And I'm going to tell you how to handle this. All right, Steve, we'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 after the hour. Uh, subject of today's strawberry letter I'm stressed out in the classroom right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter All subject. Right. I'm stressed out in my classroom. 32-year-old dude teaching adults how to get their GED is uncomfortable because this 60-year-old woman is hitting on him. Uh, you know, she 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 want to get at him and invited her to dance. He said he didn't want to go. She needed a young man to keep up with her. She in her 60s. You could have went. They oh, 60-year-old people can't dance that long, dog. I can tell you that my damn self. <laughs> Yeah, you know, one or two dances, they go sit down. They need to, she got to take her shoes off, everything. I told her I ain't never have time for that. And you don't like her because she scared you. Then she bought this bag of cherries to, and said she pick them from a tree. I just tried to remind you last time. Old people like to pick stuff and give it away. Flowers, <laughs> cotton, <laughs> cherries, <laughs> apples. Like I said, I'm, I'm surprised she didn't can nothing for you and offer you some preserves. But if you keep on, though, your ass going to get a sweater made. You can believe that because <laughs> knitting is next. <laughs> uh, she said it was a gift for me for being, uh, she asked you, first of all, she tied these stems with her tongue, too. Mm. And then she asked you if you wanted to watch her do it. That's not exciting watching a 60-year-old woman tie a stem with her tongue. Because, you know, she keep pushing her tongue up against the roof of her mouth trying to tie that stem, push them damn dentures out, and it's going to throw the whole thing off. Uh, she said it was a gift for me for being such a good teacher. Well, you don't have your GED yet, lady. So I don't know how good a damn teacher he is. And then he t- then she told you to pick the darkest chairs because we had the sweetest juice. And she winked and left again. Now, I'm an Asian guy, and she's a dark brown woman. Okay, so let me hip you to something culture. Uh, When she told you to pick the darkest cherries because they had the sweetest juice, that comes from the saying, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. She being a very chocolate uh, brown woman, it's a suggestion that she's juicy. That's all that means. So now because you're an Asian guy, she's a dark brown woman, you don't want her to think it's a race thing when you firmly reject her and tell her that she's being inappropriate. Now, let me tell you what might happen to you here. When you reject her, she old, and she's 62. You might get your ass slapped. You just might. I ain't promising it, but you might. She sound a little tough now. She out picking chairs, climbing trees and stuff in the backyard. You know, and she go dancing. She might be in some kind of shape. Uh, But you going to reject her. And because of what? Well, dog, let's talk about this first. Let me give How can I stop her from acting out and making these comments? You can't risk any rumors of impropriety at work. Not in these days and times, you can't. Mm-hmm. You can't stop her from acting out and making these comments about upsetting her without upsetting her. I'm very stressed out knowing she's coming to class. You should see her. Please help me. Mm-hmm. Well, we can't see her. <laughs> but you got to start saying something slick. You're going to have to hurt her feelings, though. Because she's 60 and she real aggressive. And uh, I don't know how I could suggest to you without being offensive. So don't. <laughs> well, so, I mean. So don't I go was, down that road. <laughs> okay, well, okay, Shirley, well, I'm not going to go down that road. But suppose, though, I'm just hypothetical. Okay. Suppose he just would say to her, Steve. he don't, Steve. he don't like uneducated women. <laughs> you did not just say that. I, I know you did just. I'm say just that. saying. You suppose he say that. <laughs> I have asked. Suppose you. that. Suppose. Okay, let me see how I could dress this up for you. Maybe if he said, "I like to be with someone that I'm equally yoked with." Okay, right. that's that's okay. better. Mm-hmm. And then she said, "Well, what do you mean by that? Well, your ass is old, and you don't have a, a, a high school diploma." No, he cannot say that. And I have a college education. <laughs> no, he can't say that. I mean, Stop I'm just it. trying to say how he could say that they not equally yoked. I'm just trying what he could do. You need to take all these tight ass clothes off <laughs> and learn these damn multiple. <laughs> <laughs> You need to take all these tight ass clothes off and sit down over here and learn these damn timetables. Right. <laughs> over here, that's why your ass ain't got no diploma now, tying these chair stems with your damn tongue. 
<laughs> you should have been paying attention in school. You sitting up in the math class tying stems with your tongue. Now, you're too old for this. And sit your fast ass down somewhere, and your stomach is too big <laughs> for that tight ass dress. <laughs> you don't know that. You well, you're going to have her. to say something to get her attention. Yeah. And take them old ass wedge heels off. <laughs> <laughs> and now I don't want no damn crocheted scarf. I'll go out with you if you could tell me the square root of 81. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, You can email us or Instagram us, guys, with your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM. And please don't forget to check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 after the hour, today, of course, is a very special day in history. It's uh, 9-11, and we'll talk about 9-11 right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Today, the nation will pause to remember 9-11, the terrorist attacks that happened on that day. It was 18 years ago today that our country changed forever. We all grieve the loss of nearly 3,000 people following a horrific series of terror attacks that took place. New York City, Pennsylvania, and the Pentagon. I'm Diane Sawyer, and it's Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. It is beautiful outside, perfect September day. Just a few moments ago, something uh, believed to be a plane crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. I'm afraid we've got a tragedy on our hands. That looks like a second plane. Oh, another one just hit. Oh, my God. It literally flew itself into World Trade Center. People are jumping out the windows, I guess, because they're trying to see themselves. We now have fire confirmed at the Pentagon. Police officers ran up to us and told us there is a plane that has been hijacked and is headed this way. United Airlines 93 crashed in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. We are a nation under siege. The building has collapsed. It pulled it down on itself. Oh my God. My goodness. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like this. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Today at Ground Zero, there will be moments of silence beginning at 8.46 a.m. Eastern Time. We can't thank our first responders enough for the courage and the bravery they showed that day. Also, we just found out the New York City Fire Department is about to gain 15 firefighters whose fathers perished in the September 11th terrorist attack. The Firefighting Academy graduation ceremony occurs in two weeks. One woman in that class and 14 men are following their dads into the New York City Fire wow. Department. Wow, wow right? Great. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The graduates include two brothers as well as a sister and a brother. Uh, the fire commissioner said bravery runs in these extraordinary families who have sacrificed so much for our city. We will never forget. Mm. The first responders always go in there blind. They don't know exactly yeah. what's going on. You know, they're risking their and, life just going in. Yeah, and what an amazing way to pay homage to your father. Yeah. By following in his foot. That's just the ultimate mm-hmm. way of honoring his life. It's just amazing, man. It's such a sad thing that happened on that day. So many innocent people lost their lives on that day. Our hearts go out continually to the families and uh and the city, man, it's, yeah. it's, it's been, yeah. they've, um, America's a, a country, man, where they get back up and go. But boy, that was, that was a tough blow. Devastating. Yeah. Hearts go out to all the yeah. families, though. All right. Yeah. Um, coming up at the top of the hour, uh, as we switch gears here, are you trying to find someone to spend the upcoming cold weather months with? Mm. Mm. Cuffing season is here. We'll talk about Hello. it right now after we... this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's cuffing season, guys. So the question is, are you trying to find someone to spend the upcoming cold weather months with? Well, if you don't know what cuffing season is, let's explain. See, during the fall and winter months, people who would normally rather be single or promiscuous find themselves desiring to be cuffed or tied down in a serious relationship. Get it? The cold weather and prolonged indoor activities, uh, they cause singles to become lonely and desperate to be cuffed. So when you guys were single, got to ask the guys this, uh, was this the case for you? And of course, Junior, you are single. 
So do you, we'll, we'll start with you. Uh, do you find you're trying to find love in the fall and winter months? No, nah, no, nah, I ain't cuffing. <laughs> now, if I'm cuffing out for the relationship, right, we're going to cuff and be together because it's cold. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, well, then she can't eat broccoli. Why? Huh? Yeah, all my women got to eat meat. Why? Why? What's that? A little thicker. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Man, I need heat. I ain't heat. mad at you, man. In my bed. That's what I'm so looking no for. Vegans? You no, need heat, so no vegans. you don't have a crisis. Vegans need yeah. not apply. Yeah, no vegans. <laughs> what did you say, Steve? Junior need heat so he don't have a crisis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. tickle cell yeah. crisis. Yeah, mess around you. You too thin. I'm, I'm my ass in the hospital. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to wrap a thigh around me. So, okay, so that's what you're going to be looking for during the mm-hmm. holidays. All right. All right, T, it's a toss up. I don't know who to go with. I'm going to go with you, Steve. Why you don't go to me? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Safe. Come on, Steve. No, Not don't go you. to Thomas. All right, let's go, nephew. What's the question? The question is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, when you were single, you're married now, uh-huh. of course, but when you were single, were you looking for someone to cuff up with during the, the cold winter months? And what about the holidays yeah. as well? Yeah. Air night, air holiday. Uh, what? Yeah, somebody that'll keep you warm, for sure. Uh-huh. Different person. Oh, not the same person? No, uh, that ain't no good cuffing when you say, we cuffed last night. That ain't good. You got to have somebody. You want a different cuff mm-hmm. the next night. You know what I'm saying? You don't <laughs> see that? No. Mm-mm. I mean, once you no. cuddle up with one on Monday, Tuesday, uh-huh. I don't want to cuff up with her mm-hmm. again Wednesday. That ain't, you know. Wow. I want to feel something different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. See, I was thinking take him last, Steve, so we could go out <laughs> after him. So it wouldn't have to linger. No, nah, you probably going to want to get it's out It's hard to recover. <laughs> uh-oh. Okay, when it's, you were uh-oh. single, uh-oh. Get ready, everyone. When you were single, Steve, were you looking for someone to cuff, cuff up with? No, I didn't month? date for cuffing. <laughs> I dated <laughs> for hollering. <laughs> I wanted somebody to do something to me to make me holler. I didn't give a damn about cuffing. I want to go home anyway. <laughs> you just wanted to holler and get out? Like, ah! like yeah, that? Yeah, you know he like holler. I yeah, 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 yeah. Holler, you know. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Do it again, Shirley. Like, ah! like that? No, no. Hollering? That's hollering? No, no. Mm. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's hollering. <God>, girl! <laughs> Girl! Girl, get cat! Mm. Cat! Girl, you better. Mm. I like the mmm. So That's that bite that lip. Jeez! God! Girl, you gonna get a car! <laughs> yeah, you gonna get, get a car? A car. A car. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I dated for. I dated for Holland. I didn't care about no damn cuffing. Uh-huh. I didn't want to stay with you, none of that. Hey, hey, hey. hey but you like were single. Holland. Yeah. Oh, you didn't so want to st- And to be single, why are we staying together? So Junior's the only one that's true when he's single? Because Tommy had a different one every other day. And I, you, Steve. <laughs> I didn't have a different one the other day. Uh-huh. But I didn't want to stay with you, though. Oh, you wanted mm-hmm. to go to your own house? Well, I'm through. I'm hot. So what is, what is we no, hold that's okay. yeah. yeah. That's what he Don't hold it. I'm hot. See, women like to cuddle. Got all that. <laughs> but the- Yeah, but can we cuddle <laughs> after I cool down? <laughs> <laughs> he, got, uh, he got a hot flash going on. <laughs> there ain't no hot flash. I done got all the furnaces and pistons is pumping the and everything. Is, yeah. I got to shut this damn furnace off. All that hollering. <laughs> all right, uh, coming up, more music, more trending news on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We'll be back at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so today is National Service Day, and it's also Ludacris' birthday. Uh, Steve, we got to send a shout-out to Ludacris for taking a stand against Hurricane Dorian. Ludacris donated $100,000 to help the victims of the hur- of uh, Hurricane Dorian. Luda raised the money during his 14th Luda Day weekend. Today just happens to be Luda's birthday, so we got to say happy birthday, Luda, and thank you for caring about the community and our Bahamian brothers and sisters. You can go to Steve Harvey FM on Instagram to read more about the story on Ludacris's Bahamas Relief Fund. Uh, Ludacris nice. has always man. been a good brother, man. Yeah, yeah, give always. it back. Yeah. Always. Mm-hmm. Oh, and today is his birthday, too? Yeah. 
That's mm-hmm. awesome. One hundred thousand yeah. dollars. That's outstanding. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. We talked about uh, Michael Jordan earlier. Yeah. Uh, gave a bunch of money to a million. Uh, yeah. A million dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure Bohemian they can use it all. Fund. A million, a hundred thousand. All of it. Counts. Yeah, all of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Luda's yeah. coming out with some new music anytime soon. I don't know. For but what? Be- all he got to do is he's making money off plenty of stuff he got. Yeah. Well, he mean, got a strong catalog. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you yeah. Know. But it'd be better than a lot of stuff that's out here. <laughs> Be interesting. It's getting on your nerves, Boy, Junior. It's mumble rap. I can't stand nothing they talk about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have you more of the old? Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending news coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Antonio Brown back in the news. Now he's being sued by a woman who claims he sexually assaulted and raped her. What? Yeah, yeah, this is crazy, right? Antonio Brown? Antonio Brown saying that he sexually assaulted and raped her during three separate encounters. Wait a minute, how does it happen three times? Wow. This is all according to a a new lawsuit that was uh, obtained by TMZ Sports. The woman behind the lawsuit identifies herself as Brittany Taylor. She says she was hired by Antonio as a personal trainer. Uh, and then she says that the first incident happened back in June of 2017. So this, we're talking two, two over years two ago. years ago uh, during a training session when Brown exposed himself and kissed her without her consent. Then she describes a second alleged incident later that month. Brown, while positioned behind her, began masturbating near her without her knowledge and ejaculated on her back. That was the second oh, incident. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, it's getting crazy and crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then several months later, the accuser claims that Brown reached out to her to express, um, you know, that he was sorry and begged her forgiveness. Uh, Taylor claims that Brown begged her to continue training him after initially uh, hesitating. She ultimately agreed. But then nearly a year later, on May 20th, 2018, she says he countered her, forced her down onto a bed, pushed her face into the mattress and forcibly raped her. Oh. Wow. Yeah. She said she tried to fight back, but he was too strong and he overpowered her. This happened three different times? Yes. Yeah, 17 three, was the first year. Yeah, three different occasions. June 2017, that was the first incident during a training Okay, and then session. the next one? The next one was later that month, later in June in 2017. Then the third one was um, May 20th, 2018, when he cornered her, she says, and forcibly raped her. Ugh. She tried to fight back, she said, but he overpowered her. Right now, the victim, the, yeah. the, the investigation and the, and, the, and, the, and the victim of it has to go through it. I think the football team and the NFL has to react, yeah. you know, to the accusation immediately because of the climate today. Yeah, there was a lawsuit filed in federal court in Florida. Uh, Supposedly, there are some profane and very angry text messages from Brown as well. Yeah, this is not good. Nope, nope, nope. All right, meanwhile, Brown's attorney, his name is Darren Heitner, uh, he has issued a statement adamantly denying these allegations and claiming that uh, Brittany Taylor only filed the suit to punish Antonio Brown for refusing to invest $1.6 million in a business project back in 2017. Mm. All right, coming up, our last break of the day, and of course, some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey. At 49 minutes after the hour, you don't want to miss it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are, last break of the day. Boy, oh boy, what a day it has been. Oh, my goodness. Um, but a great day. It's been wow. a good day. Yeah, a great mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. All of them been good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Steve, uh, you could take us home with some closing remarks. Well, here, here's, here's something I want to share. I've, I've really gotten into this mode of sharing some of the things I've learned this year when I was when I've started uh, doing these morning meditations. And I just started it this year, everybody, so I'm not like, you know, I've been doing this for years or anything. I, I just started it this year. And it's probably been one of the best uh, changes that I've brought about myself uh, mentally, spiritually, 
uh, for just to have the right state of mind to continue up the road. And I, I just want to talk to you all about, about your relationship with God. And once again, this is not that I'm an expert at this because trust and believe I'm not. I'm growing every day with this. I'm learning. But I'm in a sharing mode of trying to share you what I've learned so you don't feel like you're the only one out there tripping on this thing because I have too. And so uh, I I just want to talk to you about what happened to me when I just started to give God a, a bigger presence in my life. And I want you all to listen to this uh, if, if you're on the outside like I was or you borderline like me, if if you gave God a bigger presence in your life, what could happen if you just gave him a chance? I just want to throw this out there. Just what could happen if you would just give him a chance to have just a bigger presence in your life? Uh, because what it did for me, man, uh, it, it just, it brightened up some of the dullness of my gray days you know i'd have some days man where i felt overworked overstressed the monotony of it all you know when you when you give god a chance god can put a sparkle in the routine of your daily life because see what happens is and i found this to be true in my situation and maybe some of you can relate to this you got to repeat so many tasks day after day you know, it just gets monotonous. You got you go to work at the same time. You drive the same route. You got the same task at your job. You work around the same people. You sit at the same cubicle or the same station. You work in the same route. You know, you drive the same way to work. It take the same amount of time. You listen to the same music. This monotony, this monotony can oftentimes dull your thinking. And when you when the when you get monotonous in your thinking, it dulls it, and then your mind slips into neutral. So you know you know what I mean. When your mind isn't stimulated, when your mind slips into neutral because the monotony, you can do it with your eyes sleep. You don't need to even think about it. You know your way to work. You know the way home. You ever notice you be driving all of a sudden? You just know that this is your exit. And just monotonous. Your mind can slip into neutral. Well, when your mind is in neutral, it becomes unfocused. And then it's vulnerable to the world. It's vulnerable to the devil. You remember old people used to say the idle mind is a devil's playground? This is what it's talking about. And when your day-to-day tasks become monotonous, your mind can slip into neutral, and all of a sudden, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And then that just pulls your thoughts downward. And your as your thinking process starts to deteriorate because it is monotony, it's become so mundane, you become confused about a lot of stuff and you feel like you ain't got no direction. But the best way, the best remedy to refocus your mind is that relationship with God. You need God, man. You really do. And I, I, ain't, I ain't talking like, I've had him my whole life, even though he's been around me. My mama raised me in the church. I slid off. I was doing my thing. But man, in the total realization of it, on the real, just on the low, low, you need God, man. You really do. He offers you guidance and companionship. And it it can clear up a lot of stuff for you, man. And look, I ain't trying to tell you, man, that you got to become Bible thumping or or, you know, or, or what to be, have people thinking of you as a holy roller or something like that. I know that's what you're running from because I try to duck the uh, terminology myself and the labels that people put on you. But, man, don't trip on that. Don't trip on that. I'm telling you, man, go form yourself a relationship with God. It becomes so helpful to you. What would happen if you just gave God a chance? I mean, just think about it, man. If you made more room in your heart for God, what could possibly happen? I mean, look, you got so much that's going on in your life, so many challenges and barriers and things that you're up against and so much indecision and and confusion and and, and wanting to know your your next move. Well, why don't you try this, man? Why don't you sit down 
and just tell God that you really need him, that you really need some help, and you really need a companion, and you would love to have his advice and his counseling. You ain't got to go nowhere to do that, man. You could just do that today. But it would slow down some of this tripping. I'm telling you, man, God performs miracles all the time. God make dreams come true. What would happen if you just gave him a chance? Open up your heart a little bit, man. Make God a greater presence in your life, man. He can do some miraculous things for him. All you got to do is ask. He don't ever walk away from people that are seeking him, okay? Talk to God. He'd love to hear from you. Y'all have a great weekend, okay? I know I will. All right? Thank you very much. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 